Hello, my lovely chaotic people. I'm Dennis. Once upon a time, I was a HTML code tinkering with Netscape Navigator. That's a relic from the 90s. Then I went down the Scrum Master, Agile Leader, and even coaching Rabbit Hole only to boomerang back here to software engineer. Looks like I've come full circle for now. Today, let's have a quick chat about why you don't need that brilliant library in your project. I'm currently leading the front end efforts at TechFlow, so expect some front end examples. For context, at TechFlow, we build program portfolio and project management software for banks. Yeah, that's a serious business, serious man, and serious user. But that doesn't mean we've had to be serious all the time. Certainly, guys, I suppose. Yes. Now, let me paint a you picture of what we're dealing with. We have a front-end built with Next.js framework. We have a REST API for a Java backend and database. We have an authentication service, managing logins and user sessions. We also have two types of tokens here. The refresh token, which lasts a week. We have an access token, which lasts a day. We those tokens are packed into JOT. JSON web token, if, and the job is stored in cookies on the client side. On the other side, they also stored in the database on the server side. And that's how daily grind the tech flow. That's pretty standard, right? Yeah. And let's go to the browser to see something interesting. If you try to Google on our library for Next.js, you're likely to run into this nexo.js that's the most popular solution for authentication for next js let's see their pitch open source for stack on your data easy flexible secure of course and the main add authentication in minutes sounds dreamy right Let's check the start on this magical beast. Let's check a start. Yeah, around zero weekly downloads, eight kilobytes of unpacked size, that around 500 files, and 86 open pull requests. That looks like a red flag for me, but don't worry for now. Let's go to. Let's go to deck. Yeah. Let's try it and let's set up it. Set up looks very easy enough. We should add an API route in Next.js. That's the standard. We should wrap the client site in the provider. And finally, we should throw in some UI components for signing and say that's simple, neat, and really quick. Should I say? We all cook about our current scoreboard for now. I suppose next I will go one and white needs a got zero. Yeah. Oops, remember there is a small problem. Why we need because we need the credential based authentication of here. And guess what? Next house does not support it out of the box. What do I let's see? We got build it ourselves. We got built it ourselves. So here is a function. Here is some functions. There is a next owls config. The credential provider is declared here. We have an authorized function in it, authorized function in it, which makes a request to our backend API or to our author authorized service, authorization service. Yeah. So look, what's the main about that? The most important thing about that is that the size of this code around five kilobytes. We got five kilobytes of extra code written, no matter what you use, library or not library. Let's go to deck, to the deck, and see. I suppose what needs uh, is back in the game, so we have a tie here. Okay. Now let's talk about data flow in our application. For example, the user requests a list 
both tasks. Browser sends a request to the Next.js API route. And Next.js forwards the request to the backend with an access token in it. And also said backend validates the token and either replies with 200 OK and here is your data. Replies for one unauthorized and it's time to log in again, dude. So far so good, but what happens when the access token is about to be expired? It needs to be refreshed in the background so the user doesn't get logged out randomly. Now, did the next hours handle that? Of course, no. Once again, we have to build it ourselves and let's go to GitHub to see how we cope with that. We have a refresh access token function here. Let's check. Yeah, there is a request to our auth service to ref with payload. And, uh, and, and we have a callback. We call it here. We call it here while checking if the token needs to be refreshed. Fine. Let's go to the deck. What about scoreboard for now? I suppose at that point, why Lisa goes ahead because, because we had to write code once more time. Uh, at this point, we need to raise some question. What's the library even doing for us? What's the actual value of this library? What's the cost of an alternative? What are the sign costs? Let's make it clear. Sign costs is stuff we have to implement anyway, library or no. We already have an estimation for that. Five kilobytes of credential out set up in our app. Let's calculate the uh, cost of the alternative. We need functions to handle JOT, encrypt session, decrypt session. We need function for session management, like create, delete, refresh, update. We also need a couple of helpers like get sessionals and uh, is session. And let's have a look at VS Code. There is functions. There is functions. I, I sum up all, all, those, all those functions in session TF. Crypt, decrypt, create, delete, refresh, update, get session, and is session exists. Okay, what the most important thing about that? The most important thing about that is the size. And I selected all the lines and the size is six kilobytes only. Oh, right, let's go to the deck again. What else? We also need a context provider, just like next source has. We should also add middle for early request processing, like token validation and refreshing. And let's have a look. We have a session TSX here, which is session context provider with a couple of handy functions. Get session here and get token to get token at front end at the client here. And what most important about uh, there, the size is 1.3 kilobytes of code. Let's check the middleware. Middleware here, a brief glance. What about middleware? 2.2 kilobytes for middleware. Let's go to the deck again. Yeah, we have 9.5 kilobytes of native code. That's our alternative cost. What's the final verdict here? Look, 800 kilobytes and 500 files versus 9.5 kilobytes and only three files. You tell me guys, now who wins? That's a rhetorical question for me. Okay, when should we use extra libraries? The first is when you are on the clock and you need something to run immediately. Second, when the problem is truly complex at first, trust me guys, you likely don't need to run it React 
or web RTC. The third, when the alternative is way more expensive, but be aware here, be aware hidden costs like library updates, breaking changes, or maintenance headaches. Be aware when they're looking, when you stuck with the roadmap, their bugs, and their API decision. Now it's time to do homework. Please find one extra library in your project, calculate the cost of the alternative. If it's a user, get rid of it. And repeat it in a month and repeat it every month. Now, you might be thinking, hey mate, I saw Axios and query stream in your call. How can I trust you? Don't worry, there is no need to worry. That was ages ago. Now it's pure web API fetch with a teeny wrapper. You can see it on the deck. Okay, that's it. That's it. And the last but not the least, all this remember guys, syntactic sugar causes cancer of semicolons. Feel free to reach out and bye bye.